some pleasure in that service. There must be some pleasure. And that pleasure, what is it called? Rasa. Rasa. That pleasure means, rasa means that there is there is an impetus, there is a, there is a reason. So Sri Prabhupada gives some examples. Uh, a husband and wife, that they there is some desire of the husband working very hard because he has some he experiences some pleasure in association with the wife and the children. There's some pleasure, some relationship, some loving exchange. And that is the impetus to serve them, to go out and work very hard. Or a businessman. You know, experiences some pleasure from feeling the power of being wealthy or being able to perform so many different activities for uh, for be, being more rec recognized as such a great uh, personality. And of course, the most famous example given by Rupa Goswami is like a Roman crown or something. <laughs> so, famous uh, example, anyone know that famous example? Goswami gives it, uh, Krishna Kaviras Goswami gives it, Srila Prabhupada gives it again and again. The natural attraction between boy and girl. I should have probably said, you don't have to learn it, you don't need to go to the university to study this, understand what it means. It simply automatically occurs. And therefore, and whatever that, that is, that attraction, this is rasa. But rasa, within the category of the material rasa, or the rasa we experience within this world, is not uh, satisfactory because it is limited by time and space. So the attraction between boy and girl that gets interrupted by time or by space or, or both of them. The rasa that we have with our parents or our children or our friends or our possessions, it all gets interrupted at some point in time, right? At some point in time or some distance or some reason we are separated. And uh, so this is not real rasa because rasa by definition is naturally and always flowing, it's always there. So therefore we can really only experience rasa with Krishna because Krishna is always there. And the very nature of devotional service, that uh, anything you do in the realm of devotional service cannot be influenced by time and space. It cannot be in any way influenced. This is the nature of devotional service. So therefore the safest way to perform devotional service, um, according to Bhagavad Gita, according to Rupa Goswami, is to receive the, the authorization and the instruction of performing devotional service from Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas. And of course, Narayana Das Thakur explains that Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavati. If we want to perform devotional service, we want to experience this bhakti rasa, then we have to um, we have to be always connected with one or all of these five sources of inspiration: Hari Guru Vaishnava Bhagavata and Gita. Of course, there's other manifestations like prasada, but some of us are more interested in that rasa. It's a valid rasa. Because actually, it's very interesting. Even though, even though the activity of eating, taking prasada, is basically, you know, it's a very basic activity in one sense because it's feeding the body. But this is not the purpose of taking prasada. The purpose of taking prasada is to receive the mercy of Krishna. And so, but it's actually something tangible. Because in the beginning, when we're neophytes, everything we see in Bhagavad Gita and Nectar Devotion, Bhagavatam, you know, it's like the Bhagavatam, in the very beginning, it speaks of rasa. Pīpata Bhagavatam rasa 
that just drink this nectar of the Bhagavatam, which is Rasa Alayam. It is a uh, a very potent and unlimited taste. And then Muhuraho uh, Rasika Bhubu Bhavika. That uh, this taste, uh, this this can be experienced really by those who are very thoughtful and those who are very expert in tasting. So, if we're not expert, then actually prasadam, that's why devotees are, apart from the fact that it, it tastes good physically, we're attached to, to prasadam because this is, this is the awakening. That's why taking prasadam is so important. And it's also very important to take prasadam in the proper way. We should honor prasadam, we should respect it, we should not think, I'm very hungry, let me just eat. We should be thinking, here's Krishna. We sit down and we pray before taking it. Here, Krishna's mercy has come. Premi dako chaitanya nitai. Radha Krishna guna gao premi dako chaitanya nitai. That within this, this prasadam, while taking this prasadam, I will remember the transcendental qualities of Shishi Radha and Krishna and the unlimited mercy of Shishi Gauri. This prasadam. This is, how, this is how we take prasadam, not just. <laughs> shovel it in and wolf it down. This is not the process of prasad. But we have to actually uh, taste, taste the, the mercy of Gordi time. We have to taste the qualities of Radha and Krishna. So we should practice. But actually, just the taste of prasadam itself, because it's tangible. We may read the Bhagavatam, we may read five pages or ten pages of the Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. And we may then afterwards think, what did I just read? Uh, we might be thinking of something else. Very difficult to control the mind. If, if our mind is a little bit agitated or if some material desire is within the mind, then it's very difficult to concentrate. And material des desire actually destroys concentration. So, uh, so, but we can actually focus on the So it's a very important thing. But the... Nectar devotion is speaking of another type of prasad. So therefore, Srila Prabhupada explains bhakti or service, service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which is uh, the, the impetus to which is rasa, the attraction we're feeling for Krishna. So how are we going to develop that attraction for Krishna? Srila Prabhupada indicates in his uh, introduction to this nectar devotion. That we have to very, very carefully cultivate the uh, loving devotion to the Supreme Personality of God. It has to be done very scientifically. There has to be sadhana bhakti. Otherwise, the point is that once we study this nectar devotion, this is uh, the impetus that uh, we should. Uh, understand that it's not that I go to the temple, I put on Kantamala, I put on uh, Tilak, I go to the temple, I bow down before the deity, I participate in the Kirtan, and that makes me a devotee. Being a devotee means that we have to enter into this Bhakti Rasa We have to actually enter into this ocean of nectarian devotion to Krishna. So, it means that we have to take advantage of Krishna consciousness in our own homes. Not just on Sundays or when we go to a program. But we have to every day very faithfully chant minimum 16 rounds of the Maha Mantra. And not only that, but we have to try to taste that Maha Mantra because we're talking about rasa. We want to have a relationship with Krishna which will, which will allow us to keep our consciousness focused on Him, on him when we're taking, so that when we're taking prasadam, we're thinking of Krishna and His qualities, we're thinking of the mercy of Chaitanya Nitai. And everything we're doing will reflect the same thing. Because ultimately, for a devotee, another very famous verse of, uh, uh, of Rupa Goswami is uh, Anasakta Sivishaya.